So this is the problem we have. Here at the front desk where I work, we have the need for the storage of paper for the printer, for the FPOS machine, all the staff's personal folders, all jammed in there, but now we've got too many and we need more space. I'd also like to have space for, well, some sheets of A4 paper, that would be nice to go up there for the printer. So what I need is a much better solution for this area. Maybe even a place to hang my hat, I don't know. Hi guys, so I did this mock-up of the uh, corner of the front desk where I work at at work to represent the area. Uh, I've placed the light switch and the light in the correct places according to where they're actually at, so I have an idea of scale. So the basic part of what I've come up with is this here. Uh, the storage of uh, paper, stationery, stuff, yeah, personal folders, and some administrative folders. Uh, switching on the stationery layer, uh, I've got some A3 paper to store, some A4, some A5, some receipts, and some receipt pads, uh, some larger you know, binders, ring binders, and a clipboard, that sort of thing. Uh, the printer and the FBOS machine are sit like so. Now the printer has a little flap that flaps out from the back that you feed some paper in. Um, that I use quite a lot, so the reason behind setting it forward is so that I could still flip it open and it wouldn't hit the wall, uh, which happens at the moment quite a lot because the printer's pushed all the way back onto the base, uh, onto the, uh, at the moment the printer's sitting on this cabinet here, all up against the wall, so I have to constantly move the printer forward in order to feed the paper into the back. So, making this storage shelf, front desk cabinet I'm calling it, um, sit forward, this, uh, it's not going to be too much of an issue because there's a bin and a seat that sits around about here, so um, you're not really going to bump into it or anything. So it's in two sections, the bottom section and the top section, appropriately named I guess. The bottom section um, has you know, six millimeter plywood dividers, uh, this one is an 18 millimeter divider only because that's where the printer is going to be sitting and I wanted to put a bit more structural strength into it. Uh, this 18 millimeter backer here with a, sp a space or a cavity in the back, that's going to be holding a power board there, so I'll have to be drilling a hole somewhere around here to feed the cable to the printer and cable to the FBOS machine. And the MDF and plywood come in, you know, large sheets. They so I'll have to lay out these parts and obviously cut them up oversize and then trim them down to size. I can foresee a couple of uh, challenges, I guess you'd call it. The first challenge I'm going to have to come up with is on this part here. These grooves don't go all the way through. They actually have to stop 30 millimeters from the edge. So I am going to be routing up to about here and then I'll just square it off with a chisel. So that hopefully won't be too difficult. Um, these parts here, the sides, I'm going to delay cutting, I'll, I'll lay out these parts side by side and then I'll cut them oversize, cut it out oversize, put in the grooves uh, for the edges so that I'll put all these in with both panels together and then once I've done the grooves I'll then cut the panel in half and trim them down to size, that way the grooves should match. Uh, I mean to some woodworkers out there this seems like a really easy build. For me, I'm a complete novice, I've never done anything like this before so I'm sure there's going to be mistakes I'm going to make, hopefully not too major mistakes I can fix. Um, and this is really just a learning experience for me, uh, I've taught myself how to use SketchUp taught myself how to use a circular saw and a table saw and well yeah I thought it's time to actually do a proper project so this I call the front desk cabinet it's uh, my own design and with any luck it turns out exactly what's on screen cross fingers and uh, knock on wood or plywood or MDF or whatever material you're working with I guess so yeah comment. Uh, I'd love to hear 
from you know people that have done something like this before, or even uh, yeah, just comment if you have something funny to say or hey, some constructive criticism. I know I'm going to make mistakes. That's I guess part of it. Um, but with any luck, I'll have this built sometime in the future. And uh, thanks for watching. Uh, like this video. Uh, subscribe to the channel by all means uh, if you want. Um, wish me luck. And um, yeah, thanks a lot. And uh, I'll see you in the next uh, portion. So uh, here's a few of the photos I took whilst uh, laying out the parts using a drywall square um, in conjunction with combination square and a straight edge 1200 mil ruler. Uh, these are the plans, getting it all laid out nice and square, you know, marking a couple of mil either side, putting a straight edge clamp and the straight edge ruler side by side so that the saw could fit in between, gave me a nice straight edge. And uh, after having it all laid out, cut it all up and uh, cut them all out oversized. And so far, it looked like it all worked out really well. So, I initially started out uh, cutting the back part and of the of the lower part of the lower shelf um, to 148 millimeters but I wanted to sneak up on the cut because I wanted to fine-tune the measurements I'd gotten the blade calibrated pretty much to you know, exactly what the ruler would say however I did didn't quite trust uh, and so getting myself set up I decided to uh, get the first cut exactly right using you know, sneaking up method and measuring and you know, part asking about basically um, until I was able to get the uh, exact width that I wanted so yeah, you can see I'm just trimming off bit by bit back and forth uh, this my dust collection or more like dust relocation. I don't really have dust collection. I've got a vacuum cleaner, but uh, this fine dust would probably kill it really quick. So I just basically blasted it with the air compressor and got it off the table. I'll have to sweep up once the job's done. But here I am just tapping the fence incrementally, just getting it, you know, sneaky, sneaky. Uh, at this point here, I'm pretty much on the money, but I just thought I'd verify getting my digital calipers. $15 from eBay, so they're not fantastic, but they were cheap. And like I said, I'm not a uh, professional woodworker. I'm just a hobbyist, just learning how it goes. So yeah, 148.34 millimeters. Not too bad, but a little bit oversized. So I figured, how am I going to... How am I going to get that uh, 0.3 of a millimetre off the edge there? So I came up with this ingenious solution, clamped the workpiece to the top of the Triton work centre tabletop, and figured uh, by doing that, all I've got to do is, using the uh, middle knuckle method, just tap the fence a little bit at a time, until the uh, calipers showed closer to 148. It didn't have to be exactly 148.00 or anything, because I can always just run the sandpaper over it if I need to. So that side's pretty good. And then obviously had to go around to the other side. That's the thing with the Triton work center is that you have to set each side of the fence to the same. Um, I'd love to get you know, a proper table saw with a, you know, Biesemeyer style fence or even, you know, incra, incra positioner system, but, you know, who's got thousands of dollars just to spend on mucking about. 
Not me at this stage. Um, yeah, so knocking the millimeters off bit by bit until I was happy with that. Locked the fence down and gave that final cut. Get the gloves back on. Got girly fingers, delicate skin, so hey, I'm not a woodworker, I'm a receptionist. And checking the final measurement was 148.34, and now I managed to get it down to 148 millimeters, 0.15, which, hey, 0.1 of a millimeter, that's pretty small. That's good enough. So, on to the next piece, knowing that uh, that's exactly what I want. Run the piece through and they should both match. And there again, the dust relocation, straight at the camera. Don't know why I verified it, but hey, I'm a DIY hobbyist. You just can't trust your tools. Not when they're that cheap. Hey. So yeah, put them both together. They felt like they matched. They were pretty damn good. So happy with that cut. And uh, on to the next piece. That's the thing with the Triton, it takes a lot just to get the fence set nice. You've got to set it exactly parallel to the blade, otherwise you can get into problems. Blow the dust. And measure. Let's see where I'm up to. Unlock the fence, reposition it, and feed it through again. Once again, sneaking up on the cut, it's always easier to take a little bit off rather than figure out how to add it back on. I started to get into a bit of a workflow, getting into a bit of a zone, creating lots of that awful MDF dust. At this stage, I didn't have any uh, dust mask on, so I don't recommend that. MDF is toxic stuff. I do eventually put a uh, face, well, what do you call it, dust respirator on, which made a lot of difference. So much easier to work with when you're not sniffling and getting crap up your nose. So yeah, piece after piece, cut it through. It's handy when you're laying out to write the dimensions on the workpiece uh, that you're doing, just that way you can always you know, verify that you're cutting to the right dimensions. So, next piece now, I think this is where I uh, discovered a limitation to the Triton Work Centre, although it's a fantastic tabletop for DIYs. This this part of the cut I decided it was quite a large board I had to cut in half and I wasn't quite sure if it was going to be safe enough. It's quite a long piece so I thought the riving knife and uh, dust guard, blade guard, sorry, um, that comes with the Triton was probably a good idea for me to fit. Um, so in a minute you'll see me uh, fit, the, fit the riving knife, although the riving knife isn't that much of a big deal when you're cutting MDF or plywood because the parts don't tend to close up at the end. So it's, acts, I don't know, the riving knife at this stage really just acts as a way to hold the blade guard and the dust, and the dust hood. Here I am trying to figure out how I'm going to do this safely. I finally figure it out. Okay, let's get that protection on. So it just clips, uh, slides in, push it up towards the blade, and then lock it down with the back lever. 
uh, here I'm making sure it's not going to hit the blade, lock it down, adjust the height. Uh, here I'm just grabbing an off cut to set the height. It's a good little system when it works, but you'll see here uh, I run into a bit of a problem. Uh, like I said before, I've, I've calibrated the blade to be pretty much, uh, well, it's actually set one millimeter over what the ruler says, but that means I can sneak up on the cut. So yeah, here I am feeding it in, oh, turning it on, feeding it in. And I get probably about 20 centimeters into the cut and stop. And it doesn't go any further. So I sort of, no, try again, doesn't work, switch off the machine. And uh, here I'm figuring out what's caught, why it's not going. And having a good squiz. The blade's off at this stage. Obviously, because I turned it off, getting a close look. And this is where I discover that the riving knife is not perfectly in line with the blade. It's actually slightly to one side. So, riving knife is out of there. I figure this is not really going to help. And I'm not going to reset the blade. So, with the riving knife out of the way, I figure it's safe enough to make the cut without it. It's not going to close up or bind or snag the blade and uh, much easier. So sliding it all the way through and uh, at the end of this cut I realize that the work center is just a little bit too close to the shelves that are just out of frame and it only just gets to the end where I can't push any further without it knocking into the shelf to the left of your screen. It managed to make the cut but it's probably about three millimeters at the end that it couldn't make, so I had to just break it off, the end, which was fine. I just sanded off that bit, and it was all good. So after that, I decided I'd better move the table a bit further back to give me a bit more room. So it's just a matter of kicking up the, the wheels from underneath, locking down. Right, so this one here, as you can see, 480 millimeters, and this is how the fence work. You unlock it, slide the whole rail system out, choose your measurement, and although it said 480 on the piece, I thought I'll start at 485, and that way I can sneak up on the cut. through spitting heaps of dust into my face there you probably saw off frame I knocked the switch off with my knee it's quite a handy little feature when you can find it otherwise you're just hitting the work center randomly whilst holding a bit of wood around a spinning blade So readjust the measurement, move the super jaws in the background out of the way to give me a bit more room. It's a really tiny workshop I've got down there, it's basically just a single car garage and uh, doesn't really fit a car anymore. So yeah, just trimming off the piece down. It's always a good idea, obviously I've, I've learned from other YouTube woodworkers that the blade should not be all the way raised, it should actually just protrude a little bit above your workpiece, it makes it a little bit safer that way. And it's certainly a technique I've uh, employed thanks to the, uh, the, the professional YouTube woodworkers like uh, you know, Izzy Swan, Mark Spagnolo. I don't know if I've said his name correctly. Sorry, Mark. Um, yeah, Steve Ramsey from Woodworking for Mere Mortals. Heaps of good, good tips and tricks from these guys. I've learned a lot. 
as I said, like I'm a complete novice. Never done these sort of uh, this sort of activity before, but hey, I got into it. Um, had a few tools, built up a bit more of a collection, built a crosscut fence, as you can see. And um, yeah, just it's a bit dodgy. Well, it works, but because I recently calibrated the blade, I had to recut the groove in the middle of, or the slot in the middle of the crosscut sled. So now, from my perspective, the right edge is uh, exactly where the blade is, but the left makes a bit more of a gap. So I can't really line things up from the left. I can line things up from the right, but not the left. That, uh, you can see my little the air compressor blower gun in the background stuck into the side of the crosscut sled and that little hole underneath it is where the jet of air comes out. It's quite handy when making crosscuts and then give it a blast of air and blow the dust out of the way. Now I've got to try and sneak up on this cut. It's a little bit awkward but it's hard sort of knocking it when you don't really have the room to get your hand in behind it. But it seemed to work. A little bit of taps here and there until it finally got right on the line. And uh, yeah, push it all the way through. Beautiful cut. And one more for luck. So here I uh, needed to get 70 millimeters width for using a, a stop block, and yeah, thought I'd do a quick test cut on a scrap piece just to make sure. And there it was. And so measuring it up, it happened to be 70 millimeters on the nose, first time point to me. So once I was happy with that, it was time to make the lower section dividers, the vertical parts that uh, separate the rings of paper. Now uh, they're going to be 70 millimeters, which is basically uh, 60 millimeters plus 5 millimeters either side of the dado. Um, now this is where I made a bit of a stupid error, dangerous mistake. Coming up, I uh, made flip that bit up, and then as I pulled the cross cut sled back, boom, ran it across the blade. And that piece, I figured, wasn't much damage, but it was enough damage for me not to want to use it. Probably could have, yeah, probably could have used it, but because there was going to be one spare. I decided that's going in the bin. I only needed five and the plans cut out six, so that was my mistake and fortunately I had a spare. So yeah, now it's just a matter of sneaking up on these, uh, trimming off the edges to the pencil lines and then yeah, finishing the cuts. I have to say using a crosscut sled is uh, quite a pleasure to use once you get it you know, dialed in and fine-tuned and running straight there's no play um, so you know, different angle for the viewers and this is where I obviously have the dust mask on uh, not the dust mask what do you call it respirator paint respirator but it works for dust as well um, lining up the pencil lines and making the cuts the uh, stop block I had positioned the other way had it flat so that uh, the pieces would actually fit underneath the stop block that way it actually held it down uh, because some of these pieces were quite long and hung over the edge the stop block going horizontally like that 
essentially held down the piece while still allowed me to slide it underneath. So um, by doing that, I was able to cut a small notch into that stop block and use that as exactly where the blade is. Uh, so here it is. Here I'm just trimming off the edges of the these two parts and making sure that they're both you know, perfectly the same length. I believe these are the left and right sides of the lower section. So yeah, they've got to be pretty much exactly the same. Otherwise, you're going to end up with a wonky cabinet. Um, so yeah, I lock the piece down again, slide it underneath, check, double check, triple check, and then make another check. I have to say, I really like that tape measure I'm using there. It's got, uh, it's all metric. It has none of that uh, imperial stuff on it. Uh, it means that you can approach a edge of a piece from either side, and you can see what your measurement is, uh, rather than trying to guess when uh, your metric's on one side and you've got an imperial on the other, and you're just trying to line up a, a mark. It's just easier to get rid of that imperial stuff and just go metric. When I was very young, I uh, used to play with my father's uh, tape measures down in the workshop, and I used to think that the imperial measurements were uh, for people that had bad eyesight and the numbers were bigger. It wasn't until I grew up a little bit and realised that there were two ways of measuring things. Uh, the standard way, the metric way, and uh, with inches and that sort of stuff. So there, putting the stop block, this is a, an angle where you see we put the stop block on and it actually helps to hold the piece down because this piece extends quite far to the right, to my right. And it locks it down and it steadies the cut. And then once the cut's done, you can just sort of slide it through and, and of course now I realise I can't get the piece out. So to take off the stop block, get it out again. Working in such a small shop, um, you got to have your wits about you. Obviously, you you got you know, dangerous spinning blades. You got big pieces that you're trying to maneuver around. It's just me working down there, so you just got to make sure you know what you're doing, be present in what you're doing, and watch that blade. Um, watch where your hands are. Always look at the blade. Because if you can see where the blade is, if you can see where the danger is, you can stay away from it. I do a lot of measuring and double checking. I don't know, maybe I'm just paranoid. I don't want to... Uh, cut too much and then have to find another piece to replace it. Now this part here is, this is when I realized I can cut the stop, the stop block with just a little nick there and that way I can use that little notch that I've made as an indicator of exactly where the blade's going to cut. Um, handy little trick, but obviously you're going to, yeah, it's a sacrificial stop block. As you can see, I've used it a bit for spray painting, and that's, yeah, another project. So, lining up the cuts, and perfect. And now comes the tape measure again. Handy little trick uh, that I learnt from another YouTube, a new YouTuber, Jimmy Deresta, fantastic guy, really creative. Um, putting your tape measure on your belt like that, you've always got a tape measure to hand. Such a handy little trick, such a simple thing. And you only need three metres, you don't need a, 
a big one. I've got five meter there because that's the only, that's the smallest tape measure I've got that has just metric. Well, having said that, I did buy a three dollar ninety one from the discount store, but I can't really trust its measurements. It's a little bit out. So I'm starting to get used to having a five meter tape measure clipped to my belt rather than a smaller one. But hey, it's all about accuracy for me. So this is uh, cutting up the shelves for the, the vertical shelves going up the side of the piece, of the unit of the cabinet. These ones have to be uh, 250 deep, no, millimetres deep, and uh, 302 wide, I believe. Yep. That's so that the folders can fit with the spines facing out. So here I'm just, I've done the first cut and now I've got to get now the six millimeter plywood being fed through. What I decided to do was cut these all into large strips um, of exactly the same width and then using a cross cut sled to trim them off, uh, to cut them down to the 250 length, 250 millimeter length. Um, feeding them all through at once like this ensured that they were all exactly the same width. And I was pretty happy with all that. Here I am pushing down on the plywood as well as against the fence so that you know, I'm away from the blade. I'm, the force of my hand is moving away from the blade. If I was to slip, I would slip closer to the fence and away from the blade so I don't have a push block or a push stick or a push piece of cheese, I don't care. It it works. The gloves have enough grip on them to ensure that the piece is fed correctly and safely. And there again, dust collection, uh, relocation, sorry, except for that bit. Now is I'm sneaking up on the cut, so the uh, needing to sneak up on the cut is pretty important. Um, cut it over size on one side, get it close to the pencil line, and then your final cuts should line up nicely. And double check your measurement. Now here I thought maybe I could cross cut it with the miter gauge, and so I figured, uh, hang on, am I going to have enough room? So I thought, well, if it's gone past, yep, yeah, no, it's not going to have enough room. The miter gauge channels, unfortunately, they don't go all the way through, they stop either side, which is kind of annoying if you want to create a large cross cut sled. So this one it stops front and back, which I designed it so that the blade would sit in the back block, that little bit at the end. Um, nice and safe, but yeah, because those channels don't go all the way through like other table saws, it's a little bit of limitation. And getting the, I fitted the blade winder kit to the Triton a month ago. It's quite handy, it's a lot handier than having to get under the table and wind it up. Mm. Cutting through the last few pieces here. You can use the fence as a stop block in some applications. Uh, this one was not one of them. Oh, that's me blasting the air. I 
just got this cut there, but the fence idea is probably not going to work so well. So here I decided to well, finish that cut up, and then with these longer parts of plywood, uh, how do I do that? I just batch them through. Turned out the fence uh, set at the right length did work. It seemed to work well enough. And uh, but yeah, got to be careful getting the last part off once you've made the cut. And yeah, batched out these shelves fairly quickly. Well, it certainly looks quicker when you speed up the film, but I yeah, started to get a bit creative with the camera angles, and pretty much, yeah, that part done. Now, on to the next part. And that part was superfluous. <laughs> 